Tonight, police hold grave fears for a young man missing after a police pursuit near Wyala. And it's back, Agfair descends on Broken Hill to the delight of locals. This is Southern Cross News with Fraser Goldsworthy. Good evening. Wyala police are pleading for information from the public on the whereabouts of a 19-year-old Port Adelaide man who hasn't been seen for nearly two weeks. Scott Redman was allegedly involved in a car chase at around 4pm on Sunday the 21st of April. Police were chasing a black station wagon on the air highway near Kimber but abandoned the pursuit when it turned onto a dirt road. The car was found four days later at Secret Rocks. He was with another man who has since been arrested. All we'd ask is, Scott, if you're listening to this, please contact police, contact friends, let people know that you're OK. Police believe he may have hitchhiked into Wyala from the Middleback Ranges. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers immediately. Another application for an oil exploration company to drill in the Great Australian Bight has been rejected. The company had proposed to undertake marine surveys in an area just 80 kilometres southwest of Port Lincoln. A bid to drill in the Bight rejected once again. The National Offshore Petroleum Safety and Environmental Management Authority rejected an application from oil exploration company PGS. The regulatory body handed down the decision late last month saying it was not reasonably satisfied the environment plan met certain criteria. It also said it didn't demonstrate suitable environmental impact reduction. The application submitted October last year included a survey area covering about 30,000 square kilometres in water depths ranging from 100 to 3,500 metres. NOPSEMA haven't approved any oil or gas exploration activity in the Great Australian Bight for more than a year. Greenpeace is suggesting other oil companies should take the hint. What it should really do is show companies that are still persisting in pushing ahead with plans for oil drilling, like Statoil, uh, that they should really reconsider uh, conducting drilling in this region. While this application may have been rejected, PGS is able to modify its seismic survey plans to resubmit again in June. But what three, three refusals in a row shows uh, is that they can't do this effectively. There's such a diverse uh, and unique range of marine life in this region. Casey Trelaw, Southern Cross News. A leading nursing expert says country hospitals need more specialist support in emergency departments to tackle the ice epidemic. Professor Carol Gretsch says it's also important to ensure those affected by the drug are given safe and secure support when they enter hospitals. Regional areas are under no illusions of the effects of ice, but in emergency departments it's a huge challenge for staff to take care of those suffering psychosis while keeping themselves safe. Public safety, safety of patients, safety of bystanders and safety of staff are absolutely imperative. Professor Gresh was in Wyala last night to present a study on new approaches to dealing with patients trapped in an ice psychosis. She says a focus on DS Escalation is the key. Ways that we can create an environment where the person actually feels safe. She said recent studies show EDs are much more focused on restraining patients. A more custodial model where the person um, is restrained uh, and either chemically uh, and or physically. But for this to work, she says more specialist staff are needed. In regional areas where ice addiction is a major issue, communities are struggling to retain drug and alcohol experts, with Wyla having just one servicing the city. Without them, she says it makes it difficult to treat these people. Simply they don't have the, um, the workforce. You need to have the specialist staff that are skilled in being able to do these therapies. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Federal Labor Senator Deborah O'Neill has paid Broken Hill a visit today, meeting with a number of local experts to discuss issues facing the health sector in rural communities. A lack of drug and alcohol rehabilitation services was a key talking point. Not to be able to access those sort of services locally makes a difference. When parents who have a drug and alcohol problem aren't getting the help they need. The flow on effect to young people is very significant. The Senator also took the time to praise the hard work of health staff working in the outback. 
Well, Ag Fair Broken Hill is underway for another year with thousands flocking to the town's race course for the popular event. The very best of agriculture and local produce has been put on show with more than 300 exhibits set to wow the crowds. It's only here every two years, but it never fails to draw a crowd. We had about 10,000 people through the gates last Ag Fair. So we're hoping we can, we can better that. Sheeps, tools, quads and balls. There's something for everyone. Spending the town's race course, one of the best ways to see it all is from above. Yeah, no, it's been very good. So, no, no, we've been very happy up here so far. A lot of passers can come in, spend one day with a bit of luck here and catch up with people and see how they're going and managing and have a beer together. And Celebrity chef Belinda Jeffrey was enjoying her time back in the Silver City, cooking up a storm in the woolshed tent with a host of different stalls. I was here 14 years ago, so it's fantastic to be back and still seeing a lot of familiar faces, which is great. While organisers are pleased with today's numbers, they say the biggest crowd comes tomorrow. Friday we find that we get probably a lot of the pastoralists come through on Friday uh, and they come back on Saturday to, to try and do a deal. So normally we probably get Oh, a third of our crowd comes on the Friday and two thirds of it comes on the Saturday. Kevin says there's plenty to see and do here at Ag Fair including checking out the region's livestock. From the animal nursery to breeding bulls and rams, he says it's fun for the whole family. The variety and, and the, the different stuff that's out here is, is well worth the $15 admission. Patrick Reinke, Southern Cross News. Coming up next, the Laura Hospital finishes up some much needed upgrades to its kitchen. Details next. Broken Hill's own Country University Centre has been officially opened this afternoon. New South Wales Deputy Premier John Barillaro was on hand to cut the ribbon and declare the facility open. 64 students are already signed up at the centre, using its services to study a variety of degrees. To come here today and see what is a fantastic centre, uh, I'm excited, numbers are looking good, well beyond our expectation. Uh, this is going to be a success story and it's, like I said, good to be here. Enrolments at the centre are now open. Asthma affects one in nine Australians and kills over 400 people a year. But would you know what to do if you witnessed someone having an asthma attack? Well, Asthma Australia has held a workshop in Port Augusta in order to boost the number of people who know what to do in that exact scenario. Shortness of breath, tightening in the chest and a blue tinge to the lips. These are signs someone with asthma might be in serious trouble. The flare-ups can be very sudden, out of the blue, or it could be a flare-up that lasts for, you know, several weeks. The focus of the workshop was to look at the factors that trigger a flare-up. The main culprit, exercise. To know about um, the uh, risk of asthma when they're exercising and know what to do to exercise safely. It's good for all us people that are involved in country sport to learn these things because we don't have um, the copious amounts of first aid people around to help us all the time. Asthma Australia also says it's important for sufferers to have an action plan in place, such as having the infamous blue puffer on standby. So that on their plan they would know exactly what to do if they were to get asthma symptoms when they're exercising. The aim is to educate people on how to identify and treat an attack with the long-term goal of reducing the hundreds of preventable deaths nationwide. With awareness and knowledge people can make a difference and there may be someone here who may save a life one day. Garth Burley, Southern Cross News. The Laura and Districts Hospital has received a much needed cash injection to improve patient care. Nearly half a million dollars has been put towards upgrading kitchen and staff facilities. A generous $470,000 legacy left behind for one of the region's smallest health facilities. Left to us in a bequest from Ada Hinks, uh, who was a local a woman who lived here in Laura all her life. The kitchen upgrade has been on the wish list for a number of years. The original part of the original building and it didn't meet food safety standards so it was something that was, uh, was needed to be done. The much needed upgrade has improved workflow for kitchen staff. With top of the range appliances and a large working space making the kitchen more accessible. Stainless steel benches all, all through here, we've had the whole new floor Redone. We've had all new cupboards all put at the back there, new benches all coming through there. We've had major stainless steel work done at the back of the kitchen and on the other side. We've had new range hoods put in, we've had brand new fridge and freezers. 
The renovation will help the team at Laura and District's Hospital to provide the best possible patient care. An efficient industrial kitchen, so we now can meet those standards. Um, so the residents and the patients have certainly, um, it's certainly been a huge improvement for them. Improved our ideas of cooking and how we can do things It's um, with our food safety standards. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. The latest group of students at UniSA's Wyala campus officially graduated at a ceremony this morning. It was also a historic day for the campus with the inaugural set of students graduating from its early childhood course. After at least three years of hard work, a day of celebration. The class of 2018 were handed their degrees as proud parents and staff watched on. Of the 34 students, five will keep studying, while the other 29 have secured employment. A wonderful day for them. Um, you know, they're, they're moving out into the workforce now and, and becoming leaders in our local community. After the pomp and ceremony, families gathered outside to celebrate the achievement. Vice-Chancellor David Lloyd says country graduations provide a much more intimate experience. Everybody has an opportunity to have a conversation with the pro-chancellor as they cross the stage and he was asking them what they were going on to do. It was also a historic occasion as a while a campus celebrated the first graduates from the early childhood learning course. The uni says we should expect more graduates as it's a student favourite. It's a very popular of course, it's an, it's an area that people have a, a vocational uh, drive towards. Shelby Conlon and Fiona Ryan have managed to secure jobs teaching kids at primary school in Wyala. Both say they're excited about their new jobs and thankful they could study local. I really enjoy my class and they're a really good bunch of children I have and the teachers there are lovely. I love being around my family so it's helped me stay with my family. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. In the news ahead, footy tips, plus a celebrity chef returns to the region for Japanese flavoured fare. Details next. Wyala Council looks set to back a mentoring program run by a former football legend. Youth Opportunities offers high school students mentoring sessions, helping them develop their own leadership program. Over 700 students have successfully passed through the course could come from a difficult background, they could come from a broken home uh, that makes it hard for them to see what success is like, but this program allows them to do that. It's already underway at Air High, but plans for expansion are underway. Some of the region's best and brightest flowers will be on show this weekend. The Upper Spencer Golf Orchid Challenge features beautiful blooms grown in the heart of our region, and one town has managed to secure a back-to-back -back win already. In its 10th consecutive year, the Upper Spencer Golf Orchid Challenge is putting on quite a show. It's hard work to sculpt an attractive orchid, but growers from Port Pirie and Wyala are giving it a red-hot go. They say it's easy to grow with our weather conditions, but the hard part is making it bloom. So we've got to simulate the conditions of humidity and temperature and where they come from. This weekend, around 80 different orchids grown across Port Piri and Wyala will be on show. With what we see behind us, we've got a Piri display, a Wyala display and a composite display. Participants are allowed up to 20 plants each and it's up to their own creativity to design the best arrangement. Judging took place yesterday to see who would take home the crown. It was Port Piri who stole the show once again this year. It's attractive and it's consistent, no blotches, no smudges, no damage, um, it's looking at you. The display is available for public viewing in the Pensioners Hall on David Street until Saturday. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Celebrity chef Peter Evans has joined the prestigious Line and Label restaurant in Port Lincoln for another of its famous feature dinners. Organisers say the Japanese flavoured event was another delicious success and they can't wait to do it all again. A familiar face in the food trade, showcasing the very best of our local produce once again. It's our second of our, I guess, feature dinners like this and we have 80% of the same people that went to the last one, coming to this one too. Yeah, we've been in the planning since uh, early February, so we're absolutely delighted. The theme of the night focused on Japanese cuisine. When you even think about South Australia, you think about the, the amazing seafood, but especially Port Lincoln. And who cares and respects more for seafood in the world than, than the Japanese? 
And if you missed out on Pete's visit, there's a few hints as to what to expect next time. Thought we'd probably do one in July. The fire going, some beautiful red wines, probably some, you know, some slow cooked meats. Who knows, but we'll aim for July, we think. Big fan of spice in all different, uh, different variations. So um, we might put some spice, we might put a little bit of coffee in there, we might put some chocolate in there and uh, really get down and dirty with some spice. But Pete kept his lips sealed as to what can be expected in Sunday's My Kitchen Rules Grand Final. We've got our two finalists and uh, it's going to be a showdown, that's for sure. We have some amazing food lined up and uh, I think you're all going to love it. Casey Trelaw, Southern Cross News. Time now to look at this week's footy tips. Hello and welcome to round three of SGL football. This round starts with Port taking on Central at Port Oval on Saturday. These two sides look evenly matched and this should be a tight game. I'm Tiff and Port in a close one. In Port Augusta on Saturday, it's the Lions who travel for the second week in a row to face reigning Premier South. I'm Tiff and South. On Sunday in Port Augusta, it's West who will host Solis. I'm Tiff and Solis. Double headers continue at Memorial Oval. First up in the early game, it's Rapina versus Runa Bay. Both teams coming off big losses last week. Bay's yet to open their account this season and I think the Roos will bounce back for a win. Saturday's late game at Memorial Oval, it's North Wyala versus Central Wyala. Central's dropped a match last week that they probably thought they would have won against South, whereas they take on the undefeated North team and North will go 4-0 at the end of this weekend. And finally on Sunday at Memorial Oval, it's South Wyala versus West Wyala. Both teams are actually equal on the ladder in terms of points, two wins each, but I think South season really get a test in the next couple of weeks. They play West this week and then North, and I think the Dragons will get back on the winning track quite comfortably. Welcome to Portland and Footy Tips and Round 2. We kick off this round with Tasmans taking on Mallee Park at Ravendale Oval. Even though Tasmans didn't make the four last year, I'm tipping them to be big movers in 2018. I'm going to tip Tasmans to win this one in what most people would consider an upset. In the next game, we've got Waybacks hosting Boston's at Centenary Oval. Boston's are playing a lot of young players and Waybacks being reigning premiers, I'm going to tip them to have way too much experience and win this one comfortably. In the last game, we've got Lincoln South heading out to Wongaroo to take on Marble Range. Both teams haven't got a win yet, and Marble Range are coming into this season with high expectations. And I'm tipping Marble Range to win by just two or three goals. Round two of Broken Hill Football sees West take on North. West are still in the building stage. North, after coming off a loss from South, will be looking for a win, and I believe it'll be easy for North. The other game is held at the Memorial. Central playing South. South dominating again where they finished off last year will be full strap and I believe Central will be undermanned and will be beaten easily by 50 to 60 points in that game. Stay with us after the break we'll have all the local weather details and Amy after a few wet days the sun has returned. That's right, Fraser. We were able to put the umbrellas away today and the sunshine is set to continue. All the details are up next. Welcome back. A return to the fine weather around most centres today. However, maximums were cooler than what we've seen in recent days. 21 the top in Port Augusta, Wyala and Port Lincoln. A look at the satellite now and cloud and a cold front behind a trough is bringing gusty showers and isolated thunderstorms to the south. If you're out on the waters this weekend, there will be calmer westerly winds shifting northwesterly up to 15 knots. However, seas are still going to reach 3 metres. Meanwhile, sunrise is at 6.56 while it'll set at 5.36. And just before we head into tomorrow's forecast, a big thank you to Jono who captured this shot of a beautiful sunset looking towards Mount Young in Wyala titled Whisper Waters. And we're loving all your weather shots. So remember, if you have one you would like to share, you can email it to us at localnews at sca.com.au. Now for tomorrow's weather and a mostly sunny day around all districts. However, those cooler temperatures will continue. Port Lincoln could still see some showers and a top of 22. Sunny in Broken Hill and a top of 20. Showers will clear in Port Lincoln by the end of the weekend with clear days expected on Tuesday. A sunny few days expected in Cleve before a top of 24 on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Woodna is set to warm up to 25. A sunny start to next week forecast for Wyala with maximums in the 20s. Port Augusta can expect mostly sunny days with temperatures in the mid-20s with Kadena experiencing similar conditions. 
Port Perry can also expect mostly sunny days as the new working week kicks off, while Clare will reach a top of 22 early in the week. Meanwhile, Broken Hill is in for sunshine and maximums in the low to mid-20s. So, Fraser, no better way to start the new working week than with a few days of sunshine. Thanks, Amy. And that's Southern Cross News this Friday. Enjoy your evening. Good night.